about us and it says something about what we're going to do. All right. For example, um, if you notice, I almost always are almost exactly the same thing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say about me? You're a creature of habit. Creature of habit, maybe. Yes. Like it's simple. You don't like to go shopping. Well, I wouldn't say I don't like to go shopping. I don't have any money to go shopping. Or you don't have the time. I don't know, yeah. More than, more, all those things are true. I think the other thing is, it says about me is I don't want to spend any time thinking about what clothes I'm going to wear. <laughs> right? It's like if I'm going to wear one of three or four pairs of jeans and one of ten different T-shirts and one of four or five jackets, hey, that's the easiest compared to all that. Now, were I going to a job interview when I dress the same? No. Why not? Because I want to say something different about myself. On my wedding day, did I wear this? No. All right? On that day, you know, the, the goal is to stand out. You know? I don't stand out wearing this. You know, I mean, I'm just here I'm going about my business. I want to be comfortable. On my wedding day, were the clothes as comfortable? Probably not. But on that particular day, I had different goals. I wanted to say something different about myself. Day and I want to stand out. You might, might do a similar thing in a job interview. Or I might do something where it's different clothes if I'm going to um, work in the yard or uh, shovel snow or whatever. Here's the point though the choice of clothes says something about what we're going to do, what we're going to try to express. And we can sort of get that information even without asking. For example, I used to work at a place that was, you know, quote, business casual, but a lot of software developers dressed like this, only not as nice, all right? In other words, you know, there's no rips in my jeans, I have a jacket on, and the t-shirt is clean, all right? So at that place, the software developers really didn't dress particularly well. If I showed up in a suit. Everyone was going to ask me, did you have a job interview today? All right? Because they assumed, they were able to tell that without talking to me. They were able to tell that without hacking my email and seeing a message or tapping my phone or anything like that. The clothes I wore gave some information to the world in a very immediate way. All right? Even before I said a word. All right? People knew something was up. Maybe, you know, maybe I had another kind of appointment or whatever. But the point is, is that it said something about that. All right. So, what does this have to do with anything? All right. I've heard typography called the clothes for your words. All right. Typography is the clothes for your words. And you can dress your words up in a certain way, and they will give a certain meaning even before people see the actual words. The typography can give and can indicate some sort of meaning even before people see the words, just as seeing me show up in a suit gives some kind of meaning even before someone were to ask me what's going on. All right. Now, interestingly enough, you know, there's, there's other parallels as well, you know. You pick clothes that are appropriate for the occasion, you know. For teaching, I want to be comfortable. I don't want to look completely unpresentable, and so on. So I'm picking the clothes that fit the occasion. If I was just dashing off to the grocery store to pick up something, who knows what I'm going to be wearing then, right? Whatever I happen to have on. If I'm going out to a fancy restaurant, I might dress up, all right? The point is, is we wear clothes appropriate to the occasion. Typography is the same as well. Our typography ought to be appropriate to the occasion. We'll talk more about this in, 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 as we go forward, but I just want to sort of set the scene and, and talk about some parallels. You can have clothes that make you stand out. You can have clothes that make you blend in, right? Um, me going to the store, grocery store, I'm not really looking to call attention to myself. So I'll wear just basic, ordinary, bland clothes. Again, 
on my wedding day, where it's an important day for me, I wear clothes that draw attention to me. All right? So in typography, that can be sort of the same thing. Do you want to stand out? Or do you sort of want to blend in with, with everything else? You should be careful in picking your clothes not to mix too much and not to mix styles and patterns and all that. In other words, all right, if I were to wear, let's say, a tuxedo, shirt and jacket and tie, with jeans and ski boots or hiking boots, all right, that will look very good, right? Because it's like mixing. It's like, what is this person doing? can't really figure out. Is this person going to a, you know, a formal occasion or are they going for a hike? You know? Now the interesting thing is, is sometimes if you watch, you know, sometimes you'll see someone that really pulls off some odd combinations. But you know what? That's risky. You know, I've seen guys that wore tuxedo jackets with jeans and they pull it off. But you know what? You better know what you're doing. Otherwise you're going to look dumb. All right? Likewise, you don't want to mix too many colors because that will overwhelm people. You don't want to mix too many different patterns. If you do it carefully, it will look great. If you do it haphazardly, it won't look great. Then, interestingly enough, the flip side is also true. All right? What would it look like if I had a tan shirt, tan pants, tan jacket, tan shoes? That wouldn't look very good either, right? It's good to have a little bit of contrast, but too much. All right. All these things, I think, are things to keep in mind as we're talking about typography. All right? Because we can talk about, for example, mixing fonts. If everything is the same font, well, I don't know. Maybe if you mix things up a little bit, that'll make things better. On the other hand, if you mix your fonts up too much, your, your, your page can look like a, uh, a ransom note, where every, every letter is cut from a different magazine. And it, and it doesn't make sense and it's not coherent. So we've been using the term typography, and we even had an activity dealing with typography, and I just did that sort of, because I know everyone coming into this class has somewhat of a notion about doing that. If you've done anything in Word, you probably know just some very basics of that. What would you define typography as? How would you define it if you had to write a sentence or two? I described it by saying it's the close for your words, but that's not really a definition. How would you define it? Yes? I just, I, to me, I just break the two words up. Okay. Type, and then type, type. Typography, right? Typography, and you think of uh, typography, you think of design or style. Okay. And, and then, you know, it's type, and you think of words, so okay. it's just designing your. Okay. Your designing your words? That's a good, uh, good way to put it. Um, well, anyone want to add to that? Yes. Um, I guess I usually try to get the look of the word to say something about the word itself. Okay. Using the appearance to enhance the message. All right. That's one thing that you can do. All right. I guess typography, that, that's often a goal in typography. just to make sure we're all, pardon the pun, on the same page. Uh, typography relates to essentially, really, everything you do that relates to how you're presenting the words on your page. Everything you do. Everything you do. All right? Everything you do. All right? Now, if I had that word in type, by emphasizing one word or another, I can say subtle shades of meaning. If I say everything you do, and if I had everything in bold, that would say one thing. So that's sort of a, 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 a silly little example. What do I mean by everything? I mean, first of all, there's what's called the font face. Now, that is the, the style of lettering you're going to use. All right? I would say that there's three broad classes of letters, all right? or three broad classes of font face. Um, there is... And, and, and this is probably best shown through, uh, through Word rather than me trying to, to draw it. I 
have notoriously bad handwriting. So let's go in the Word. And let's look at three kinds of font faces. I'm going to make the letters real big so everyone can see them well. Let's go in and let's make 72 point font so we can all see it. One example or one kind of font is what's called a serif type of font. And Times New Roman is a nice little default value for that. So let's go and let's type in an A with Times New Roman. Another kind of font is what's called the sans serif. Sans is simply French for without. And that would be an example of an A in a sans serif font. The third kind of font I guess I would call as decorative style. That would be the, the something like maybe this that where it looks like cursive or the dreaded uh, Comic Sans and so on. I have another word for decorative fonts. All right, Almost never use fonts is what I would call them because I very rarely would, would make use of those. And that might have something to do with the particular kind of, of stuff that I've done in the past. So I'm not saying that they're all bad all the time. I'm saying that for the standard business sort of stuff I do, I would very, very rarely use that. All right, what's the difference between these? These little thingies here are called serifs. All right? This doesn't have those things. So it's a sans serif. And this kind of looks like a fake handwritten font, so that's what I would mean by decorative. Sort of, sort of a none of the above category. So we can look at any of these and we can identify what kind of font it is. You know, let's put an A in that. Uh, it might be decorative. Oh, that's still Comic Sans. I didn't change it. Maybe that font isn't installed. Yeah, it's not changing it to, to it's not changing it from Comic Sans. I'm glad, I, I hope none of my 121 students see me doing this, that I can't change a font in, in Microsoft Word. Uh, this one, for example, Book Antiqua, it's a serif font, all right, because it has those little thingies on it, and so on. Now, as we said, these fonts, in a way, sort of communicate things. And even basic, plain old fonts like the, the, the serif and sans serif um, communicate things. The other thing to keep in mind with fonts is that we don't want to put the cart before the horse. All right? That is, while we're interested in how it looks, we want to first and foremost make sure the text is readable. So readability is a primary goal in that. For stuff that's written on a screen, for larger blocks of text, typically sans serif fonts work the best. Oftentimes for headlines, serif fonts work the best. Let's look at a boring but readable site, the Wall Street Journal site. And let's look at the font choices they have. Oh, I clicked on an ad by mistake. 
Notice that the headlines are in a serif font. The serifs actually can help people distinguish letters, uh, but those serifs don't work well in smaller print. So typically that's why you'll see, oftentimes you'll see headlines, bigger print in serif uh, font, and the um, body of the text being in sans serif font. If you were going to describe the look of this page, judging just by the, 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 the fonts on it, how would you describe it? Yes? I'd say classic and conservative. Classic, conservative, business-like. These sort of serif fonts typically have a, a more classic, conservative is a good way to say it, um, business-like, uh, old, older style of look. And interestingly enough, you know, the Wall Street Journal, one of the things they're doing is they're matching sort of the same fonts that they use on their print version to sort of connect people that are familiar with their print version. Now, let's compare that to Apple, who almost completely uses sans serif fonts. Yes? So how many different uh, types? Okay, that's a good question. Let's look how many different fonts they have. I see at least two. Okay, where's the other? Okay, the, the headlines and the text. Where's the other two? I'm sorry, repeat that. Please. Oh, the caption? The name of the newspaper? That's a different font, really? Yeah, it probably is. Probably is. It looks a little narrower than the, the standard. What about subscribe now? Is that a different Yeah, that's a different one. Subscribe now is definitely different from the headline. Whether it's the same or that is, is if, if it's not, uh, if it isn't different, it is very close. So I guess my question would be is, so how, what's acceptable? What's acceptable? That's a great question. Um, well, it's one of those things that I don't know if I can specify a number, all right? Um, I've seen good websites developed with just one font um, because there's other things you can do to vary it. Remember, the font face is just one aspect of typography. What are other aspects of it? Well, go ahead. The font weight, bold, italics, normal. Uh, another thing, the colors that are used, the background color versus the foreground color, the spaces between the letters, the spaces between the lines. All those are aspects of typography. In other words, this could be compressed a little bit. If you notice, there's a little bit of space between the lines. They could pull that tighter. Might make it harder to read, though. All right? That's why I was wondering with this. That, that probably is another type, but it almost looks to me like that is simply the same type that's just sort of compressed. Maybe not. I don't know. Is it, is it, is it different type? This one again. I mean, if you look at the J. Journal, okay, look at the J. Where do we see a J in a headline? even these lines over uh, these things overlap this is something that was not simply text this is probably an image all right so yeah we can show save image as and do that all right the point is for all this there's other things that we can do besides change the font face so we can change the colors we can change the spacing we can change the weight so there is no pan answer to say, you know, what is the appropriate number to use. Now we can probably make some general statements though. If you're simply using one font face, you better be varying something else, right? You better be varying the 
size of the font, I guess that's another factor that we didn't talk about. Or the color, or the spacing, or the weight, or the decoration, whether it's bold or underlined or whatever. So if you're going to keep that constant, you better be varying something else. While I can't come up with an exact number, I know at a certain point I'm looking at it and saying, you know what, that's way too many. If it looks like the fonts, you know, it looks like too many fonts. Now, why would you use different fonts? We talked about one example, the headlines versus the body of the text. The headline, again, larger text can be more readable in, sans, in, in serif. Body of it can be more readable in sans serif. Why would you change font faces other than that? Yes? Well, different messages on the same page, like, for example, that um, Kindle Fire mm -hmm. advertisement, to set that apart from the rest of the right. picture as a different font. The advertisement is in a different font to that. In other words, just at a glance, let's say we're not even reading this, just at a glance, I can tell this is different than that. I might not know exactly why it's different, but even without reading the words, I know that this is different than that. All right? So, you can use different fonts to um, distinguish between types of content. Oftentimes, what you'll see is, notice, breaking news is in a different color than the regular font. So that makes it stand out. All right? The headlines, which are blue, besides being headlines, are actually links. So, if we keep in mind why we're using different typographical techniques, Font faces, font size, font colors, background colors, spacing, all right, are probably the five most obvious ones. There might be others as well. If we keep that in mind, then the question is, is what's the danger of using too much of any of them? What's the danger of using too many fonts? What's the danger of using too many different colors? Okay. And what's the problem? It looks cluttered? What's another way to put it? Disorganized? Distracting? Confusing, right? Because what do these different typographical things do for us? They allow us to organize the content of a page at a glance. And, and as I was saying again, at a glance, we can see and we understand that this is something different than that. Oops. These two are something different than that. These two are breaking news. This is some other kind of news article. All right? We don't even have to know anything. Of, we don't even have to understand English. We know that that is different than that. Right? Now, what happens when you use too many things? All right? When you use too many things, you lose a sense of why they're different. In other words, if every single one of these was a different color, Let's say these two are black, and this one's green, and this one's red, and this one's orange, and this one's yellow, and so on. What do we lose? Those two that are in black don't look special anymore. They're just a different, an, another different color. All right? So by carefully choosing these typographical methods and techniques, you can emphasize and organize the material on the page for the user. So therefore, what's enough? Well, Enough so that you can organize the material in a certain way without overwhelming the user and confusing them. All right? If you emphasize everything, that's the same thing as emphasizing nothing. Right? You know, if I came up with a list of your 53 top priorities for your next assignment, well, there is no top priority for your next assignment then. Right? Um, so therefore, not emphasizing everything is pretty much the same as emphasizing nothing. Now, so that's what would define too many. If people lose the sense of how your document is organized, if people lose the sense of what the differences actually mean. All right? 
what, what, what you have and what you run into with, with especially people when they first start web development and when people first start doing this kind of stuff is the, if one thing is good, then ten things will be great, right? The all-you-can-eat buffet syndrome, that, gee, I'm going to, I can do everything, so I'm going to do everything. No, the things that you do should be done purposefully. In other words, someone didn't randomly say, I'm going to make this a different font face than this. They said, I'm going to make the headlines in that font face to make them stand out more, to make them more readable. And I'm going to make them in a different color. And I'm going to make this text look different as well. Also, if you look, it might be a little hard to see. It's more obvious on the screen. The things that are blue, you can lick, you can click on, and they're links. Whereas the stuff that is black, you can't click on. So, you do these things to help the pe person viewing your content to organize the material. All right? You do it to help them um, get the proper emphasis. You know? And doing too much exactly has the exact same effect as doing too little. Right? Because if you emphasize everything, you're the same as emphasizing nothing. So if I had just one font with one size and one color, that's almost the same as having a hundred different font faces and a hundred different colors and a hundred different uh, background colors or whatever. All right? So what you'll do is it isn't decide, gee, what colors do I think go together. You'll think, how am I going to organize my page and how am I going to set some things apart that I want set apart? All right. So in this case, they said, I want to set apart the breaking news. How can I do that? I can do that by, instead of having black text on a white background, have white text on a black background. All right. Now, other thing to say is the text needs to be readable. Right? So therefore, the colors, you can't just pick any colors, or you shouldn't pick any colors. You need to pick colors that actually contrast. Um, ideally, you want the look of the page to match sort of the tone and the content. This was said to be a very conservative, business-like page, sort of old-fashioned, the Wall Street Journal is, and the page sort of looks like that as well. Let's go to Apple's page. All right. Now, they looks like to me essentially use the same font everywhere. I don't see too many variations in font. I guess I'm just sort of glancing over it. And they use it all in, they, they, they completely use a sans serif font. I don't see any serif fonts on this page, at least not at a glance. What does the type say about this page? What, what's, the, what's the emotional uh, um, um, response that you get to this? Or what's the what, what attitude do you get from this? Yes? More contemporary. More contemporary, sleek, well-designed. All the things that Apple wants you to think about their computers. Look at even the volume of text on the page. Now, to be sure, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that one of these is right and one of these is wrong, right? The Wall Street Journal is in a totally different business than Apple's in. So I'm not saying, gee, do it like this or do it like that. But look how few words are on this page compared to the Wall Street Journal. Which you kind of expect, right? A newspaper is going to be pretty dense with text. Whereas for a company, it's going to be pretty sparse. But everything about this is sort of light and airy, and you sort of get the sense for that. Probably, if you can imagine, try to imagine Apple site done like the Wall Street Journal or vice versa. It just doesn't connect in your head. I found uh, online, and we're going to take a few minutes to review some of these uh, things. This was made as a joke, sort of. Um, bad font choices. These aren't real websites, but um, th they made these, someone made these to sort of illustrate uh, the point. 